Israel United in Christ and the Sweaty Asset. So, you know, additional truth are making free and do so, and they take up the back. The penny, the sick who don't pass or honor more, also, and they are the children who have a bad children with the aqua deities, and see a better or so, and so, and they are my now opening a friend, Captain Isaac. Captain Isaac, and I'm his Isaac. No crap, I need to get Yes, Abraham Abraham, 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 uh, Tano so a walk walks a year sometimes a at as much great do electric cars and a high pretty dance young man branches in the world more boarding with Tano Swa or more feeling bikes no and Cassandra Sankas and T and then and Chichin will be to me I will be a come a come and say I made the one young pan as a yes and care home run officer you care home run as a young boy young boy sweet okay young boy Shalom Israel, Moisa in Christ rest. This officer Hosea and then Captain Isaac on live. We are going to have a uh, teachings or a topic on who are the Israelites today. So we now invite our guest speaker, Captain Isaac, to come in to start the show. Unfortunately, we couldn't bring the bishop on due to certain circumstances. Unfortunately, so we uh, say Captain Isaac is there, so he will bring everything to light on this show. So, last way, next time, Bishop Nathaniel will be on the show. So, we hang everything to Captain Isaac for the class to start. Shalom, Most High in Christ, bless Israel. Can everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, all praises. All praises. Just want to make sure everybody um, could hear me. Um, I hope everybody's doing well in the midst of this uh, global pandemic, uh, but everything is of the most high, of course, uh, to our brothers and sisters in Ghana and scattered throughout the, the continent of Africa. We're going to keep you brothers and sisters in prayer, all right, especially those who have Just been say. affected by this, uh, this COVID-19, this COVID which was manufactured by the white man, the devil that the Bible speaks of, okay? Um, but like you were saying, um, uh, the topic: Who are the? That's Israelites? right. That's right. There's a big, there's a big lie on the earth. Um, yes, whenever sir. You, whenever you uh, hear the word Israelite or Jew, a lot of our people tend to tend to uh, say that it's the so-called white man over there in the land of Israel that's the Jew, but that's not biblical whatsoever. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we speak, thus saith the Lord. We speak out of the Bible. We don't speak with emotions, we're biblical scholars. So everything that we say is based on factual evidence. And we're gonna go over some of those factual evidence today. All right, we're gonna start with the book of um, Revelation. This is the last book in the Bible. Uh, Revelation chapter two and verse nine. This is what Christ said. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. It says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and or not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So Christ is telling you that the people that are running around today calling themselves Jews those are not the Israelites. God said that they are the synagogue of Satan. But the real Jews, those are the ones in poverty. Those are the ones going through tribulation. What tribulation are we enduring? We have endured um, 
the physical form of slavery up until now. Now it's spiritual and more mental, right? We're overcoming um, poverty. We live in stricken poverty communities, the ghettos, prison system, lack of good education, and so forth. That's our people. We're the real Jews according to the Bible. Now we're going to go into our record books to show you exactly what happened to the Israelites, where they would be in the last days, and the records and history of our forefathers. First, I want to start with Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. All right, y'all give me some feedback. Y'all let me know if uh if we cut off or if you guys can't hear me. All right, we're in um we're gonna go to the first book of the Bible. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 7. It said, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. The dust of the ground. What color is the dust of the ground? The deeper you dig into the earth, the browner it gets. Just look at the soil. Look at the, the, the soil in your garden, in your backyards over there in Ghana, right? It's brown, different shades of brown. So God said he made the first man, Adam, as the dust of the ground. Now let's go to Jeremiah. We're going to go to the book of Jeremiah. Because this is, this is easy stuff, brothers and sisters. What you're going to find out is that your pastor's been lying to you because they've been lied to. And a lot of them are ignorant, willingly, and some of them are just dumb as hell. So they're not going to tell you the truth of who you are according to the Bible. Let's, we're going to go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14 and verse 2. Jeremiah 14 and 2 says, Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. So what color is the tribe of Judah? Black. They're different shades of brown. They're dark skin like the ground. Now let's go back to Genesis 2 verse 7. Why is it making a comparison between the complexion of a race of people, or a particular tribe, I should say, with the ground? Genesis 2 verse 7 again, just in case you forgot the point. It says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, the dust of the ground. Like I said earlier, the deeper you dig into the earth, the browner it gets. Let's go to our forefather, Job, who also, who also lived during the time of Genesis when this was written. Job, we're going to go to Job chapter 30 and verse 30. It says, my skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat. Why? Because there was a famine and there was a famine that Job was going through. But he says that his skin was black upon him. A lot of times you'll look at different commentaries or you'll speak to many of these pastors in the Christian churches and they'll tell you that the reason it says my, um, my is when it says my skin is black upon me is going to emotions. No, it's not going into emotions. How do we know that? Because of the word right there where it says my skin is black in, upon me. It didn't say my feelings is black. It didn't say my emotions are black. It said my skin is black upon me. Now, we know Christ came from the tribe of Judah and in Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2, we read that Judah mourneth, the gates there of language, they are black unto the ground. Let's get some more people from the tribe of Judah. I'm pretty sure many of you heard of Christ's great, great, great grandfather by the name of King Solomon. Let's see what color was King Solomon. This is the Song of Solomon. We're going to read verse 1 in particular, verse 1, for a reason. Then we're going to jump to verse 5. So this is chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. So who wrote the Song of Solomon? King Solomon. This is what he said about himself in verse 5. I am black, but comely. Comely means handsome. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, 
as the curtains of Solomon. So here you have King Solomon, Christ's great, great grandfather, making reference to what? Making reference to his skin color once again, making reference to skin color. Now, jump, stay in that same book, jump over to chapter five and verse 11, because here you have a dark skinned man from the tribe of Judah, since we all know that King Solomon is from the tribe of Judah. Now he even talks about the hair on his head. This is verse 11. It said, his head is as the most fine gold. His locks, his locks are bushy and black as a raven. Because you know why? We have to stress those last two parts where it says locks are bushy and black as a raven. Because a lot of commentaries and so-called Christians, again, they'll tell you no. But in the beginning, he said his head as the most fine gold. So that's talking about yellow hair, blonde hair. No, it's not. King Solomon was so rich, he used to sprinkle gold dust on his hair. He used to sprinkle gold on his hair. That's what it's making reference to. Because as you read on, it says his locks are bushy. Who has locks? Black people. They're called braids. Or when you twist your hair, you lock your hair. That's what black people do. White people don't do that. Okay. And if they do do that now, they're trying to copy off black people, but they're not born like that. They're not born with that woolly, kinky, nappy, naturally curly hair. Now, at the end of the verse, it says, his locks are bushy and black as a raven. So it's giving you the color of his hair, black. So his hair is not blonde because it said, like the most fine gold is because Solomon sprinkled gold dust on his hair. All right. So all throughout the Bible, all you read about are black people, black people. Now let's go to Luke chapter 21. Let's find out what happened to these black people because the Israelites are in Ghana today. This very day, the Israelites are scattered in Ghana this very day. So here you have black people being described in the Bible who dwelt in the land of Judea, in the land of Israel, right? Now we're going to read about what happened to these black people. Let's go to a prophecy that Christ gave the Israelites around 32, 33 AD. This is the book of Luke chapter 21 and verse 20. Christ said, and when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, what armies was Christ making reference to? He was making reference to the Roman armies. Where did Christ get this understanding from? Christ was an expert in the law, right? He's the son of God. So, of course, Christ was referencing the prophecy that Moses spoke about in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verse 49 on down about the besiegement of Jerusalem. Christ was giving a warning to the Israelites. He says, and when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, the Roman armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Keep in mind, he's speaking to black Israelites, black Jews. And this is what, he, this is what he's telling these black Jews. It says, then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let's see what mountains Christ was making reference to. We're going to stay in the New Testament. We're going to go to the book of Matthews. We're going to go to right to chapter 2 and verse 13. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 13. It says, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. Egypt is a country on the continent of where? Africa. You guessed it. Northeast Africa. So the angel appeared to Joseph and Mary because of the persecution that was going to come forth from Herod. He went and he slew every, for every male two years or under in the land of Judea. OK, because of the prophecy of Christ being born. So the angel appeared unto Joseph and Mary and told him, look, take this baby, Jesus Christ, and run into Egypt and be thou there until we tell you to come back out. 
So where did Christ tell the disciples to run in Luke the 21st chapter? Let's read that again. Luke 21, verse 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Which mountains? The mountains of Egypt. Egypt. Flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter thereinto. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Written where? Written in the Old Testament. Right? But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jer pardon and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles did the point that I wanted and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled are we living in the times of the Gentiles absolutely yes so Christ told you who exactly would be in the land of Israel today. Stomping, stomping the residue with its feet is talking about the so-called white man, okay? The Jewish people. Christ tells you, no, those are not the Jews. Those are Gentiles. Those are the Gentiles that will trodden down Jerusalem until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So Christ gave this prophecy to the black Jews and a majority, what did they do? The, the ones that had common sense and prepared in advance and took heed to the prophecy of Christ, they ran down into Egypt, later on migrating down further deeper south into Africa, whether it be the west coast, the east coast, or the south coast. Let's get the prophecy on that. Let's get the prophecy on that. So you would have the Israelites that would run deeper south into Africa, set up little tribes in whatever land, whether it be Uganda, um, Ghana. And remember, what, this is a long time ago. This is thousands of years ago. So those places wasn't called Uganda. Those places wasn't called Ghana. There were other names for it, okay? When we go to Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter three, and we're going to start at verse 10. It says, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. What lies beyond the rivers of Ethiopia? Because remember, around the rivers of Ethiopia, you have the Blue Nile, which connects with the White Nile. Beyond Ethiopia, you have countries like Kenya, you have Zimbabwe, you have Uganda. And when you go to the West, you have countries like Liberia, Ghana, and so forth. God is telling you, he's giving you a, a, a map, a blueprint of where the Israelites would be. Keep in mind, Christ told black Jews, black Israelites, right? That's an oxymoron anyway, because the Israelites are black. But I'm just putting it out there because a lot of you still got that white supremacy on your mind. When you hear the word Jew or Israelites, you think white. The Israelites are not white. The Israelites are so-called Negroes, so-called black people, okay? So Christ told them to flee into the mountains. We already established that those mountains were Egypt, and then they migrated deeper south into Africa. Now you have God telling Zephaniah, another black prophet, in Zephaniah 3 verse 10, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, even the daughter of my dispersed, even the daughter of my dispersed shall bring my offering. Why does it say the daughter of my dispersed? Why? Because we were scattered. Let's get the prophecy on that. We're going to go to Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's get chapter four. I want the one in chapter four. Uh, verse 27. This is Deuteronomy 4, verse 27. Let's see what Moses wrote that Zephaniah understood. It says, and the Lord shall scatter you among the nations 
and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen whither the Lord shall lead you. Let's stay in that same chapter. Let's get Deuteronomy 28, 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. So the prophets understood this and Christ understood this. That's why Christ, that's why Christ in the book of uh, Matthew 28, I believe it's uh, verse 21. Let me get that for you. I know I'm jumping around, but this is how God commands us to read the Bible. Uh, Matthew 28 and verse uh, 19, Christ commands us. It says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. So Christ understood that. Christ, un he read Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, the 27th verse. He read Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. And so did our forefather Zephaniah. That's why Zephaniah was able to write in um, chapter 3, verse 10, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring mine offering. In that day shall thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then will I take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride, and thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. I will also leave in the midst of thee in afflicted and poor people. So we have Israelites on the continent of Africa today, wherever the Israelites are. But the reason I want to stress the continent of Africa, because this is a Ghanaian um, show that we're doing here. Christ is telling you, God is telling you that beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, there would lie a nation of people that would be poor and afflicted. But even though these people are poor and afflicted, they would put their trust in the Lord. Let's read that again. It says, I will, I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people. And they, the they is making reference to the same afflicted and poor people. The they is making reference to the same suppliants, the same dispersed people in verse 10. Verse 12 says, I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they, sh and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. Let's get verse 13. The remnant of Israel shall, do, shall not do iniquity. So the same dispersed that we read about the same poor and afflicted people that we're reading about, God calls them the remnant of Israel. The remnant of Israel. So if the remnant of Israel is on the continent of Africa, where are the rest? Where are the rest of our brothers and sisters? You guessed it. They're scattered throughout the Americas. They're scattered throughout Europe. They're scattered throughout all of the earth. The bulk of the Israelites are on the Western hemisphere and the remnant of Israel is on the Eastern hemisphere. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision the tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.